when did you first imagine turning the place over and what are the roots of the piece of work? It was based around uh, an idea that was really the sister piece that was built in 1999 but started around about that time, 1987, of um, putting a bearing into a facade so the facade just moved in one plane only. There was no kind of three-dimensional movement. It was a it was a planar movement of just three hundred degrees backwards and forwards. So if you can imagine a steering wheel doing that, that's really what the building was doing. Um, glass, brucellae, concrete, and they were just exchanging. So the glass on the stairs would come down, the concrete on the ground floor would go up. So what was opaque became transparent. What was transparent became opaque. Rather formal idea. Actually, turning the place over um, really uh, answers answered a lot of very interesting briefs for Liverpool. I mean, it, in a way, it was it was initiated out of ideas of architecture as event. That's its fundamental point. That's what got me excited. I wanted to, I wanted to see architecture that could move because we believe it doesn't. In actual fact, our cityscapes are changing all the time. Yeah. We're pulling things down and building things up, but that's at a very, very slow pace. So something can come down and be a bomb site and then be rebuilt, but you're looking at an eight, ten year span of time. Yeah. And I wanted something that the public could see, and I wanted, in a, in a, again, in a very formal way, I wanted it to be materials that we didn't associate with movement. You know, when you're thinking about glass and brick and yeah. stone exactly. and steel, they're not, with architecture, they're not readily thought of as as materials that can sort of spin and move and jump and whatever. Yeah. So it's really a metaphor for what was going on yeah. in Liverpool. Things were being turned upside down. Things were sort of being changed. But then, as one started to get more and more involved in the project, other issues came to the fore. And I think what all my work attempts to do is to challenge the preconceptions we have of our world today. But also, you're literally turn the place upside down, you know, turning the place over. You're turning rules and regulations on their head. Yeah. And you use something that is very much about rules and regulations. If you take a building, and that particular building is interesting because it's very much about a repetition and a regimentation, you know, window pillar, window pillar, that kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, Three yeah. floors, four floors, five floors, same, same, same. Yeah. And you just put this great big hole or ovoid cut into it and you start turning it and breaking all of that architectural order, yeah. you, what you're doing is you're breaking rules, yeah. and that sets up an interesting precedent yeah. on things. Fantastic. One of the things that I think is really interesting is how the work has um, kind of dissipated online, and particularly we've been really struck by um, that there's been, I think, over half a million views of one video on YouTube of the work. And I just wonder what you kind of, how you think that affects the work. Well, I think it's very interesting because we did have a joke while we were just finishing off the piece when it became quite evident that something was taking place with the building. I mean, earlier on, the whole thing was scaffed and covered in netting, yeah. so no one was really noticing. But when we were running up the machine, uh, or the machines, and just testing all our set of bits, really, the public got wind of it, and they were coming down, and it was such an amazing phenomenon for them. It was yeah. such an unusual thing for them to see yeah. that it seemed to be that everyone needed to seize it in some way. It was yeah. no good saying you'll never guess what I've just seen. It was easier to yeah. take because everyone has that. That seems yeah. to be the current mode of looking. Yeah. But I loved I loved the way that the the notion of event in architecture is taken on through another kind of event, yeah. which is that shared experience of sharing like this is guess what I've just seen you'll never believe it and then it's emailed on it's emailed on and what that becomes is you realize that what's so obvious actually is the internet is a very very interesting gallery space yeah. and there's a hell of a lot out there if you go searching for it that you can find and I, I mean I, I very rarely watch telly now but I do do a lot of YouTubing and just googling and I used to think there was nothing out there, but there's an amazing amount out there, and there's a lot of people feeding a lot of very interesting information in. Yeah. And are there any um, kind of interesting yeah. stories or anecdotes along the way that kind of There probably is? was. I've probably forgotten most of them because I'm sort of involved in so many projects at the same time. There are anecdotes for other things, but we're turning the place over. I, um, lovely little story. I try and 
with public art, it's very, very difficult because you're not really got the thing in the, sp in the studio. It's not like a sculptor who can make an object, sit with it and make corrections to it um, to get it honed and perfect. Yeah. With public art, you've got to pretty much wing it on drawings and models yeah. and, a sen and a sense of, it's, is that how it looks, you know? looking at the model, thinking, yeah, I'm going to have to take a gamble here. Yeah. Um, but one of the things I couldn't predict, although I made models doing it, is the speed. Yeah. And I said to the engineering team, looking after the mechanical aspect, I said, I want it going at 3 RPM. That way it's got no reference to a clock, you know, 1 RPM. Yeah. Um, or 1 RPM at 60 seconds. Uh, at 3 RPM, I rather hoped it would... And you'd get that breeze coming yeah. off and hitting you in the face. Yeah. And the, one of the days they were running it up to test the speed, so I couldn't go up there for a specific reason. And so I told them to keep me informed throughout the day on the phone. Yeah. And they phoned me at the end of the day and said, uh, you can't have it at 3 RPM, it's not going to work. And I said, what's happening? Are we graunching gears? Are we, are we rumbling the floor? Are we cracking anywhere? Are the motors on strain? Are we overheating? They said, it's not that. When we're going at 3 RPM, people walk by in the street. But when we get it down to 1 RPM, we're getting people stopping and looking. So we've actually been going fast and slow. And at the point when we get more people stopping is what we've done it at, and it's 1 RPM. Yeah. It's like a clock, yeah. and it's the very thing I didn't want. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, sort of 60 seconds yeah. is one revolution. It's just slightly faster than that, okay. actually. Yeah. Um, but it was one of those things that the audience dictated its speed. Yeah. So when people say, you know, how did you dictate how fast it should go? I say, it's by people like you, you know, an audience looking up. Okay. When you stopped, that was the right speed. When you yeah. carried on walking, it was too fast. So just finally, um, could you recommend for us, uh, I guess in the context of your work, and, and particularly turning the place over, um, a film, a book, and an album? Oh, God. Film. Uh, the last film I saw was the Coen Brothers. Um, what was it? No Country for Old Men. Yeah. Brilliant film. But I'm a big uh, fan of the Coen brothers anyway. Yeah. I got sent a book recently on architectural structures, which are all sort of made by people who aren't architects. Yeah. And I like that idea from the book that it did, it did two things. It reinforced this idea that you don't actually need, it's very punk in a sense, you don't actually need a training to be versed in architecture, to build a habitat. And you've only got to go down to Waterloo and look at the guys putting cardboard together to live. Yeah. Not an attractive way to live, but they're using intelligence about, you know, insulation. They know they've got that sus. Yeah. They can, a yeah. lot more card keeps you warm. Yeah. Um, and that book, uh, I've forgotten, interesting, it's a German title, I've forgotten the name of it, but it basically, it basically means space structures, space pods, yeah. but also hints at the idea of things that have landed from outer space. Yeah. And, um, yeah, that would be a really good picture book. And the second reason I think it's a good one is, as an artist or as a thinker, it's one of those books that you pick up and you look at it and you need to desperately close it because you want to go off and do something. You want to go off and make something. Yeah, it's really. one of those things, like going to a show, you know, it inspires you. An album, God, what, have, what, what would I recommend? I went and saw the Mekons last night at the 100 Club. Um... What have I listened to recently? I've actually, I've actually gone very retrospective on my thinking and on music. I've got into a lot of the 60s stuff. Yeah. Um, and I've been listening to Link Ray. Uh, I, probably because my son's just taken up electric guitar, so we've been comparing notes. Well, thank you very much. <laughs> okay. Thanks. <laughs>